in order to get the information into the computer, we have to draw somehow. And we use the light pen. And down here, we have the selection of colors themselves, a palette. It's much like a palette of paints that a painter might use. A little more freeform tool is the brush tool. It's uh, a lot like scribbling with a crayon. The first thing you do is you prepare a drawing or a sketch of what you had in mind. In 1963, computers took up entire rooms. With their text-based interfaces and unintuitive controls, these machines could only be used by specialists. They would have been nearly incomprehensible to the average person, even if they could get access to one. Given the prompt of making computers more approachable, Ivan Sutherland, a computer scientist at MIT's Lincoln Labs, sought to create a program which would offer a new way for people to communicate with machines almost entirely without the text that dominated the interfaces at the time. His solution was a drawing program, simply titled Sketchpad. We're at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington, Massachusetts. Emulating what it was like to draw on pen and paper. In Sketchpad, the user would use a device called the light pen to set points and alter lines on the screen. As the program began to take shape, Sutherland saw the numerous ways that drawing digitally was distinct from drawing on paper. Writing his thesis, it has turned out that the properties of a computer drawing are entirely different from a paper drawing, not only because of the accuracy, ease of drawing, and speed of erasing provided by the computer, but also primarily because of the ability to move drawing parts around on a computer drawing without the need to erase them. Had a working system not been developed, our thinking would have been too strongly influenced by a lifetime of drawing on paper to discover many of the useful services that the computer can provide. In addition to being able to move, duplicate, and edit drawings, users could also zoom in and out of the file. I imagine the computer has a fixed sheet of paper behind this window. Its scale is approximately two miles on side. Two miles? Right. And let's look at that. This explanation of zooming in and out of a two-mile-long sheet of paper helps show how novel these features were at the time, though they seem completely natural to computer graphics today. In Sketchpad, Sutherland succeeded in creating a new way to communicate with the computer through graphics, establishing the graphical user interface and the guiding principles for digital drawing software for decades to come. In 1974, Richard Schaub completed SuperPaint at Xerox Park, the research arm of the Xerox Corporation. SuperPaint was the most advanced painting program at the time. It featured an early use of color pixels and a frame buffer, allowing users to create rudimentary animations. Alvy Ray Smith, another computer scientist, also contributed to the program, creating the HSV color system. If you move the value or brightness slider down the current color, which is that green, gets darker. You can see it going toward black and back up toward full green as he varies the value or brightness. The middle slider is the saturation slider. As you move it down, the color desaturates so the green becomes tints of green. And at the last, the top slider, of course, is hue, which changes the hue. This system, which Smith so nonchalantly describes, is nearly ubiquitous in all graphic software today. Smith would remain at the center of digital art and animation, going on to found Lucasfilm's computer division and Pixar. Just two years earlier, Xerox had released the Alto, a computer which used a mouse and a keyboard as input and a graphical user interface. The Alto came with two art programs, Draw, a drawing program where users would set down lines precisely using points, and Markup, a paint program which allowed users to draw freely with the mouse. These programs could easily be grasped by the average person, but the Alto never saw a major public release, remaining an experiment. It would take nearly another decade for computers and drawing software with them to meaningfully enter the lives of everyday people. By 1984, times had changed. Over 6 million Americans had computers in their homes, including the newly released Macintosh, a computer which echoed the Alto in a number of ways, including its use of a keyboard and mouse. The Macintosh came with a program called Mac Paint. Mac Paint's use of the mouse was an ideal way to show people how to use the device, which many now had in their hands for the very first time. While technically the second drawing program for a personal computer after Apple's Lisa Draw in the previous year, Mac Paint gave many their first experience creating digital art, bringing a type of software previously accessible to only a few into the hands of artists and enthusiasts everywhere. The next year, Microsoft released Microsoft Paint, bringing drawing software to the two most popular operating systems at the time. Now that computers had reached the world stage, and with them, digital drawing, more specialized programs aimed at professionals could succeed. I'm John Warnock, president of Adobe Systems, and I'd like to welcome you today to view a tape that we've prepared about Adobe Illustrator. John Warnock was a former Xerox employee who was influenced to make Illustrator in part due to his wife Marva's work as a graphic designer. 
In addition to automating many common tasks in publishing and graphic design, Illustrator employed a drawing method like that in Sketchpad and the AutoDraw program, where users could select particular points and acutely adjust curves, making it ideal for detail-oriented graphic designers and artists. Three years later, also at Adobe, John Knoll, who worked alongside Superpaint's Alvin Ray Smith at Lucasfilm, would release an image editing program with his brother Thomas. Though intended primarily for photo editing, Photoshop was also one of the most advanced drawing and painting programs of its time, with a range of brush effects including soft edges, more closely resembling brush strokes in physical paintings. Through years of updates, these two Adobe programs would maintain their central place in digital art, garnering a massive community of artists and designers, even as the world of computing drastically changed around them. In 2007, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple and co-founder of Pixar with Alvy Ray Smith and others, announced the iPhone. There were other smartphones before, but the iPhone marked a clear step forward in how people would use technology, presenting with a crisp graphical user interface on a screen that could fit right in your pocket. Though it launched with many drawing apps, it wasn't until the launch of the iPad, a larger tablet device, that the next major form of digital drawing would take shape. Procreate launched just one year after the iPad in 2011 and quickly became the dominant drawing app on tablets. With a similar tool set to Photoshop, it took advantage of the tablet, which acted both as the touchpad and the screen that showed the work, resembling pen and paper more closely than a mouse and screen or external drawing tablets could. With apps like Photoshop, Procreate, and Illustrator available across computers, tablets, and phones, digital artists have never been so well equipped, and digital drawing and painting software has never been so accessible, finding its way into some of the most popular apps on the planet, like Snapchat and Instagram. While many interact with digital drawing software without even thinking about it, there's a massive group of professionals using drawing software in their creative process across art, filmmaking, design, and other fields. These artists and their creations are possible thanks to the initial principles set in place by Sutherland's Sketchpad in 1963, which were improved upon as hardware advanced and found its way into the hands of those all around the world. I started using digital drawing software. It was Microsoft Paint. After I graduated uni, um, I wanted to be an illustrator. I started learning how to edit and do the coloring on Photoshop. And fast forward, I started using digital drawing to do cartoon characters, like to build this whole colorful and playful universe I've been dreaming since I was a kid. I mean, I, I'd been drawing since I'm a kid, right? But, but digital drawing, it was really cool because it felt special. It felt like you had so many options just available at your fingertips for almost all of uh, my recent pieces. It's been digital first. I make storyboards digitally. It's, it's such a, a great way to be able to iterate quickly. It all works at the speed of thought. I was like, oh, maybe I want to tell stories. I want to be more creative. And that was when I shifted towards animation. The first time I used digital drawing with a pen tool would have been Photoshop with a Wacom tablet in college. Early on my animation, I was drawing it on paper. You're scanning it in frame by frame. Once you have that kind of pen input, it increases the speed and the quality at such a rapid pace that it totally changed how I approached making everything. 